Are you good at spotting the initial red flags as you think you are? Would you like to walk into any new situation like a new date and see the red flags? You know, as hard as we are on those who fall for toxic people, let's be honest, no one can pull off the perfect first date. All of us make mistakes because of nerves, awkwardness, or simply not knowing enough about the new person that we just inadvertently step into it and that trips us up. We are all going to inadvertently trigger a red flag or two when we meet someone. So how do we know when we've met somebody who's actually good for us versus someone who is toxic? How do we know when that person's just being nervous or we're seeing signs that we should be careful and slow down? Now, no method is foolproof, but you don't need to be a psychologist to be able to be better at this. So today, I'm gonna to cover three different things that you can do to help improve your success at identifying healthy versus toxic people. That includes one, showing signs of immaturity, especially emotional immaturity. Two, assessing how safe this person makes you feel. And three, gaining confidence in your own ability to protect yourself by developing a wait and see mindset. I'm Dr. Carrie Kermackboy, a licensed mental health clinician. I have over 20 years of counseling experience and I'm a narcissistic abuse survivor. If you'd like to hear more of my story and how it nearly cost my life, please go check out the first episode in this series of Toxic Love or read my book called Love You More, The Harrowing Tale of Lies, Sex Addiction, and Double Cross. It gives you a raw graphic look at my survival of a narcissistically abusive relationship. If you're new to this channel or to the series, this is the third episode in a year-long series where we're going to break down pathological love relationships from start to finish each week. So I hope you come back so you can hear the next in the series of episodes. So let's together in this whole year, discover how things go sideways. Let's look at the controversial or uncomfortable stuff, the things that often don't make sense to us, and even the stuff that sometimes boggles the mind of us as survivors. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to become more accurate in spotting initial red flags. But of course you can apply this to a whole host of situations like first dates, but also job interviews, meeting maybe a new neighbor, or even possibly making a new friend. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you stick around to the end because I'm gonna tell you what the biggest psychological error most of us make when we meet someone new. And in fact, it's my blind spot too. I know that it is, I've seen it in action. And it's nearly cost me dearly. So be sure to hang around to the end. And if you haven't hit that like button for this video, please do that. And be sure you subscribe so you don't miss future episodes on this channel. I've been in two serious relationships in my life. I'm a cautious person that doesn't like, and I don't like taking risks, especially those of the heart. So for me, romance is the scariest. My first husband, I was with him for 31 years. He's the nerdy, he was the nerdy engineering type. He's now deceased, but he was kind of clumsy at love and awkward around romance. And we almost didn't make it because he shared too little. I didn't know whether or not it was being shy or whether it indicated a kind of a closed off personality. So I couldn't tell if it was a red flag or just a, a, a quirk about him. It could have been that he was a highly guarded, you know, avoided intimacy, but it could have been that he just was nervous. But what I learned as I got to know him better that it didn't mean either one of those. It just simply was a nothing. It wasn't a red flag, but it wasn't a green one either. In the second major relationship of my life, that's when I met my toxic ex. He actually shared really easily and asked great questions. He seemed thoughtful and concerned, yet if you watched my first episode, you know that um, that relationship nearly cost me my life. So what did I miss about his red flags? What did I not see? Was it his need to constantly show up as the good guy or good person? Was it how he kind of dominated most of the activities that we did? Or maybe it was how he interrupted me and then judged my pace of talking, my style of talking as kind of too much. Was it his oddly firm boundaries that he carved out right away when I first met him? Or the way he kind of texted off and on? 
Now, some of those behaviors could have been blamed on just awkwardness because many of us feel really stressed in a new situation, but in his case, they weren't. I underplayed the fact that he had many previous relationships because I thought it could have meant that somebody was trying to get their life together and he was having a fresh start, but I failed to realize that it actually indicated a pattern. So what is the takeaway that we should get from this experience? I want to give you the three things that I should have known that will help you the next time you meet someone new. I want you to learn to one, pay attention to that person's emotional responsibility, how much accountability they take for their actions. I want you to pay attention to two, how safe this person makes you feel emotionally, physically, sexually, and psychologically. And three, I want you to gain confidence in your own enoughness Now, I know that's not a word, enoughness is not, but I like it and you'll probably hear me use it again. Okay, so let's start at the top. First, pay attention to the person's emotional level of responsibility. One of the problems with toxic and psychologically immature people is that they struggle with some ego strengths. They struggle with normal psychological demands and needs. You're gonna see them have problems with strong emotions and reining in their wants and desires. They're gonna have issues coping with stress. Now, on the first meeting, they're gonna be putting their best foot forward, but there are gonna be hints that you can watch out for that will give you an indication this person's having some issues in these areas. Watch their history for signs of rapid change, like rapid relationship changes and shifts, frequent job shifts and changes, problems with the law. You may find that they struggle to complete things or that they abandon too many relationships too quickly. This could indicate you met somebody who's struggling with poor judgment, uh, problems with self-reflection, and maybe they've got some impulse control issues. Also, notice how much accountability they take for things when they go wrong. How do they explain the strained relationships they may have with their extended family members or with their children? Or how do they explain the failed relationships in their past? Where do they place the blame and the fault? Can they reflect on their part, the things that they have done that helped contribute to that? And more importantly, what have they done to correct those weaknesses inherent in themselves? Then notice whether or not you see a victim mentality to help explain their circumstances. Now this can be really subtle, but watch for where they assign blame. For example, if there's an awkward silent moment between the two of you, do they step in and help do their part to carry it off? or do they pass off all that responsibility onto you? Number two, how safe does this person make you feel? Now, I know those of us who've had trauma and anxiety issues or maybe past abuse, we have an overly sensitive nervous system and we're gonna be pretty jumpy. This is gonna be where you're gonna wanna elicit help from outsiders, those who know you really well. So talk about these first meetings and what happened and see what their level of comfort is with this person so that you can begin to learn to trust your indicators and what makes you comfortable. Then also notice how this person handles boundaries, even the small ones. Like if you say no texting after 10 o'clock and they call at 10.05 or text at 10.05 and you hold the boundary, do they get upset with you for that or not? And then when they do get upset, how do they handle that? Are they somebody who holds grudges or do they try to get even? Do they behave passive aggressively? You don't want to see someone who takes pleasure in hurting you or in making you feel uncomfortable. You want someone that gives you the space to show up with yourself, as yourself. Toxic people will start to make us feel edgy and irritable, often before we even realize it. So pay attention to how you're feeling around this person and what you're finding yourself becoming more guarded. Okay, number three. Now, it's really important that we learn to gain confidence in ourselves. Now, I know that if you've had an abusive relationship, that ultimately it resulted in you betraying yourself, that you lost something in that relationship. Maybe it was money or other relationships, maybe it was your time or your health or certainly your self-respect. But part of healing requires that we relearn how to trust ourselves. So practice protecting yourself in small situations by saying no to someone who's easy, maybe the cashier or a close friend or somebody that that you know that you're really safe to do that. Learn to hold your boundaries so that you can gain confidence in holding your boundaries in new stressful situations like a new relationship. 
a lot of ways when we get out of an abusive relationship, we have to regain trust in ourselves and we can be wobbly in the beginning. And kind of like we're learning to walk, you may feel like you need, again, the help of some other people around you to check to see if you're really holding good boundaries the way you should be. But remember to pay attention to check into yourself. No should always be an option, something you feel that you have, you can do easily, even when it makes the other person uncomfortable. Remember, I'm going to share now that thing that I told that most of us make a big mistake around when we meet somebody new. It's something even I do. Our mind is a meaning making machine and it doesn't like incomplete information. So when we meet somebody new, there's a whole lot about them that we don't know. But often what we do is we fill in with what we know about ourselves as a way to explain that person's behavior. Be careful about this. When you don't have the full picture and you're missing information, take a wait and see attitude instead of filling in interpreting it from the way that you would do it if it was you in that situation. They're not you and they're gonna behave differently. Instead, just view it as a situation that needs more information don't brush away anything that makes you uncomfortable with your kind heartedness. Just take a wait and see attitude. If it's a problem, you'll get more information and then it'll help you make a decision. I wish as I wrap this up today, that there was just a simple list of red flags. There aren't, but be aware that your mind is constantly running predictive models and it is learning. It is learning how to recognize, what makes you safe and what makes you not safe. So become an expert, pay attention to your feelings and don't let fear and shame keep you from sharing your hesitation and concerns with outsiders who you trust. Stay connected to others and get their input and feedback and learn how to recognize feelings of uncomfortableness in yourself that could indicate signs of risk. That exit door in a relationship, that out, is always there and it is your best friend. So if you meet somebody who makes you feel less than or bad, there is no reason that you need to stay in that relationship. Okay, so what did you think of these red flags? Drop me a comment, let me know. And have you liked this video or hit the subscribe button? Make sure that you do and consider sharing this video with somebody who may need this reminder about red flags this week. And if you like this video, then you're gonna really appreciate the one that I did just before it, where I share how to spot a narcissist when you walk into a crowded room. And come back next week to see the green flags in the relationships. And thank you so much for joining me today on this series of Toxic Love.